friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's pick a card, we are going to be doing a generalized career reading. So if you already know how pick a cards work and you don't want to pick out an intention candle, I'll be putting those on in just a moment. I'll go ahead and just tell you that this is pile number one, this is pile number two, this is three, and this is four. So you can head to the timestamps. And if you would like to choose a candle, I'm gonna go ahead and pop those on right now. All right, so we have all of the candles down now. So over here for number one, we have a blue candle, a green candle, a white candle, and a pink candle. So uh, if you would like to choose based off of the candle colors, please go ahead and do so. Now, if you're unfamiliar with pick a cards, allow me to explain just a little bit, and then I will be quiet for about 25 to 30 seconds to allow you to choose a pile. But, um, First thing I always like to say is that you're never going to choose wrong. Many people will comment down below and tell me, I don't know if it's the right pile. I don't know if I chose correctly. There is always going to be some sort of message in whatever pile you felt drawn to. The other thing there is to note is that sometimes every single pile will resonate. Some people will watch the video from start to finish, and then they will choose which one resonated the best with them. Some people also feel drawn to multiple piles, so you might want to go to two piles or three piles or like I said all four sometimes some of the piles are also linked and if they are I will usually say that in the reading I'll tell you to go back and watch a different one if I feel like there's been a connection to another but those are like the main things that I always like to lay down when telling you how to choose now if you're still unsure you can choose based on your favorite color it might be present here you can choose looking at the timestamps in the description as well as in the comment section if you look at them and your lucky number is present that is a strong indication you can also just say 111 222 333 444 and if one of them feels like it's resonating go for that and you can also meditate on the cards which is what I'm going to give you time to do right now so I'm going to go ahead and be quiet and give you some time to look at the cards, turn the music up, and yeah, so go ahead. Pile number one, welcome to your career reading. Now, this reading is going to be, it could be about the career that you're already in if you're really satisfied, but if you are unsatisfied with your career, it also could give you some ideas as to what career you could move into. That was kind of the intention that I set with this reading. And it is timeless, so it doesn't matter when you come across it. When spirit wants you to see it, spirit will bring it to you. So uh, the first thing we always like to do in my pick of cards, if you are new is we always set an intention candle together. So if you chose this pile, you chose the blue candle. Blue definitely represents the element of water. So this could correspond to all water signs, which is gonna be uh, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So you might find that you are one of those, those signs or you have major influence of that in your birth charts. Or you could be wanting to attract someone of that sign. Uh, now, blue also represents our emotions. And so if you are looking to have a little more emotional stability in your life, this would be a really good candle choice to set an intention with that. Now, you don't have to choose any of the things that I have mentioned. You can set any intention you would like. Just think of something that you want to bring into your life, be it a person, a place, a feeling, or a thing like a material item as well. And actually, before we light this, I do want to let you know my cat is being awfully rowdy today one of my cats and so I apologize in advance if you hear him meowing uh we're having a bit of a lightning and thunderstorm and I don't think he really likes it it kind of unsettles him so I apologize in advance if you hear him like holler he will meow like really loud so um just letting you know in advance if you hear that th during this reading he's okay I'm keeping him close by me um but he kind of will wander around the house and just like shout so uh just letting you know in case you hear it but 
Uh, let's go ahead and get this set up for you. So you think on that intention, whether it be emotional stability, or like I said, something very specific, maybe Ooh, I got a little wax on the table. That is okay. Um, I'm just going to set this so we can get a nice clean straight down burn. And what I like to do is actually take a deep breath before I get or before I actually like light the candle and such, I like to take a nice deep breath. I'm gonna get that wax off the table. <laughs> um, I like to take a nice deep breath. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand right over my heart. You can put your hand wherever feels comfortable or both your hands. And let's just take a deep breath on that intention in through the nose and out through the mouth. So. All right. I'm going to go ahead and light this for y'all. And it looks like a pretty substantial flame. Like I would definitely say that that didn't really shrink down super hard. A lot of times when I light these candles, um, the candles will shrink down really quickly. I feel like many of you that chose this pile, you're actually feeling better than I think you're giving yourself credit for. Like if you set the intention for emotional stability and that really was it, was more in your emotions, I feel like you're actually doing a lot better than you're giving yourself credit for because look at how, oh my gosh, um, there's no draft in my house right now. All my windows are closed. The air conditioning is not on or the heater. Uh, so the candle is definitely doing a flicker thing. Uh, we also read candle flames on this channel. So sometimes the flame will actually interact with the reading, but, um, yeah, it's like a really nice, sturdy, strong flame. And that also tells me that whatever intention you set will be coming to you relatively quickly. So we're going to go ahead and just scoot this up to the top corner of the reading so we can keep our eyes on it. And let's go ahead and see what's going on. Pile number one. So first and foremost, we have the four of cups and I'm going to try to put these as much at the top as possible, just because I think we have quite a bit of cards today. We have the queen of cups here. We have the queen of pentacles and we have the ace of cups. Okay. This is a very cup cup ridden reading, which I love that for you. I think that's really nice. Um, so the first thing I have to tell you is I was like, you know, if you're happy in your career, this doesn't really apply, but I don't think that you pile number one, if you chose this pile, I do not think you're happy in your career. And I say that because with the four of cups, it's like you've become complacent. You go through the motions. Maybe it was a job that you once loved or a career that you once loved. And this is for my entrepreneurs too. Like, I don't want you to think that this is just like some of you I'm hearing specifically that you think this is just about like corporate jobs or corporate careers. Careers. No, this is for my entrepreneurs too. Um, many of you have just become bored and complacent. Like the universe is like, Hey, I thought this was what you wanted. You set intention for this and now you're here and I'm trying to bless you, but you, you're not happy here. So you can't even see it. And so I feel like Pile number one, you're not really happy in your career. Most of you that chose this pile are not happy. You want something different, but you don't really know what that is either, which is clearly why you're here <laughs> to hopefully get some answers and some clarification on what it is that you do desire to do. So, and I don't even want to say what you do because I feel like we have a weird thing in our society where we ask each other what we do. And the answer is always our job or our career. It's not, oh, I love to paint or I love to sing or I love to dance. I mean, maybe that is your career, but I'm just saying, um, I don't even want to say like what you do. Um, because I'm sure you as a multifaceted individual do a lot of things, but I do feel that you've become really complacent and you've been maybe trying to find the answer because with the queen of cups, the queen of cups tells me that you are somebody that maybe is more highly intuitive, highly sensitive. I actually just put a video out recently, um, within the last like month, I think it went up in September, um, I put out a video about highly sensitive people, HSPs and empaths. And I feel like you might actually be one of these people. I'm really getting that energy. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Why are some of you crying right now? I'm not mocking you. I really want, like, I would like to hug you, but I feel like some of you might be crying maybe because this is like really resonating, but I just got hit with like sadness, like, like tears, like 
I feel like I want to cry. Um, maybe some of you really need what this has to say, and I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you found me. But with this Queen of Cups, I feel like your work environment is too hostile for you. And there maybe are many people in your life that don't really understand that that working environment is terrible for you. It's terrible for you because you are somebody that actually does the job extremely well because you are so compassionate and highly sensitive that you can tell what other people need, especially if you're working with clients or customers or you're in a customer care position. You're really good at the job because you're so highly sensitive to other people, but it drains you to death. So... I shouldn't say to death, like you're not literally going to die from this, but it just drains all the energy out of you and it's literally soul sucking. So you're great at the job and they love you at the job, but it's not where you want to be. Now, the great news I have for you, pile number one, is the Queen of Pentacles tells me that you, if you're not already into entrepreneurship, you're somebody that would really thrive in entrepreneurship. You're somebody that you would be really great at taking care of your home and working from home at the same time time. Um, the queen of pentacles to me, like I identify with the queen of pentacles energy, to be quite honest with you. The queen of pentacles to me is someone that runs a very successful at home business, but also maintains a home. So that doesn't mean that you have to be like a house husband or a housewife or any, I mean, maybe it is, that could be your ultimate dream. Don't let anybody tell you that that's like wrong. I mean, from personal experience, I'm a housewife as well as an entrepreneur and I love my life. I love that I get to do those things. Um, but some of you also just want more time with your children. And so I feel like many of you are scared that if you do entrepreneurship, it's going to be too much work. But I'm here to tell you that that's not true, that this will actually be, you'll be so good at balancing and managing your own time that it will be better for you in the long run and it will truly fill up your cup because I'm really seeing that and hearing, I should say, that many of you don't feel like your cup is very full right now. Your emotional cup, your self-esteem cup, you don't feel extremely in your power. And with the Ace of Cups, it's like your cup is going to be running over. So I love that. I love, I mean, I don't love that you're in a situation right now that maybe you don't really like, but I want you to know that you have the power to make something different. You have what it takes. Um, it's not made for just like special people. You truly do have what it takes. So we also have for you, this is where we're going to get maybe a little more specific. We have the Samaritan, which is about refining your capacity to help others that the world would prefer to ignore. Um, so we're going to focus on the light attributes of these cards today, not the shadow attributes. We may do the shadow attribute in another reading. Um, so right there, that already tells me that you probably are somebody that is more compassionate, highly sensitive. And because like they would rather give you in your place of work, like you get all the angry customers because you know how to just talk them down. You know how to treat them like a person and not just like another person that has purchased something. Does that make sense? Um, so that's like a big part of, I think, what you will continue to bring to your career. We also have vampire and this makes you aware that someone or something is draining your life force. So I think everything I've said, you're already aware. Oh my gosh, look at that candle. It was just like jumping around. You're somebody that has the ability to see your energy, like literally drifting away from you. Be, and I'm telling you, this is the highly sensitive pile. I can tell because we also pulled vampire. And that is like, you can tell when something is draining your life force, when something is hurting you or hindering you, or you're somebody that's about to come into that power that maybe you haven't realized it, but now, or you just never had a word for it and you've always experienced it, but you didn't know what to call it. So you're highly aware. And we also have a warrior strength, skills, discipline, and toughness of will, heroism, sto stoicism, and self-sacrifice in conquering the ego. Ooh, I just got the chills. Um, oh my gosh, it won't stop. I just got them again. <laughs> so I feel like many of you that maybe chose this pile 
you're, you're not afraid. You're not afraid to sacrifice your time. You're not afraid to make sacrifices to make your own way in the world. I don't feel like many of you are, or you are someone that is scared of that, that you won't have enough time, but many of you just need to go for it. Like, I feel like many of you are, you think that you're like lacking something, you think that maybe you're lacking like a degree or you're lacking some kind of knowledge that you don't have. Also, I apologize about the lighting. Uh, we're having a very stormy day here where I live, which I love. It's perfect for tarot reading, but uh, it's very like the clouds keep pulling over the sun back and forth. So not back and forth. They're obviously going one way, but they're, the sun keeps peeking through at points. So the lighting is a little strange and I apologize. But with warrior, vampire, and Samaritan, all of these archetypes, because that's what these are. These are archetype cards. All of these archetypes you possess. So I want you to know that you have everything you need. Not only are you kind and compassionate, so people will want to work with you, you have this beautiful gift. And I feel like if you are somebody that really resonates with what I've said about being highly sensitive or empathic, you maybe have thought this a curse for much of your life because it makes your life harder. But I'm telling you that if you are in a career right now, whatever career you are in that is not serving your highest good, it's not you being highly sensitive or empathic that is ruining that career. It's that career that is ruining you. It's that career that is hurting you because your gifts are meant to be expressed in other ways. Now, this also gets into like star seeds and past lives and... Some of you might really resonate with this message as well. Um, some of you may not, and that's okay. But I'm getting like a definite split <laughs> on uh, what I'm hearing. But some of you, I feel like you literally came into this life to seed light into the planet. You came to the planet at this time to help raise the vibration and the consciousness of other people. And because of that, you might even be a way shower, which that I want to do an, a podcast episode on that in the future and talk a little bit more about it. But you might even be a way shower. You're somebody that helps other people ascend. So being in your line of work, if you're not satisfied, this is something that you really need to consider moving away from. And in my opinion, with the energy I'm feeling, with what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing in the cards, it is in your best interest to start moving in a way that is in more alignment with yourself career-wise and not going with the way of the world and what everybody has kind of taught you to be like or what society or maybe your parents have shaped you into because your gifts are so much grander than what you could give to a corporate job or what you could give to maybe even the company that you've started. Um, now we also have 10th house, the world. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And we have Saturn truth. What did I just say? I don't look at these before I deal them out at all. So first of all, the 10th house is the career house. Um, so I just got the chills again, like all the hairs on my legs and on my arms and behind my neck are standing straight up. <laughs> um, but the 10th house, the world, the 10th house is the career house, right? And we also, even though this is the world with a ring around it, it also shows us this depiction of Saturn in a way. So we also have, um, also Saturn actually does, uh, Saturn rules Capricorn and Capricorn rules the 10th house. So these are actually, this is all about career. <laughs> um, and so I really do feel because we have the world though, that you are meant to change the world in some way. Now we could argue all day and night that everybody changes the world on a microscopic level if we take it down to the individual person, because every single person on this planet starts a ripple. Even if you make a small shift in your family and you can't see the direct changes, every single person in the family unit will shift based on that original shift. And that's happening constantly, even energetically it's happening. So we could argue that everybody is changing the world, but I want you to know pile number one, that if you chose this, it is your emotional gift that is going to change the world. It is this gift that you need to lead your career with because it's going to bring you nothing but prosperity and abundance. And with Saturn truth, 
you're, I feel I'm getting this energy of scared. Like you're scared to be fully your authentic self. And I'm grateful that you're on my channel because that's what we stand for the most on this channel is being your authentic self. That's like literally what my brand is built on. That is like the bread and butter of my brand is being authentic and true to yourself. And so you need to be willing to stand up for yourself, to be yourself unapologetically, because it is you living in your highest vibrational, most authentic truth that is going to change the world. Even when it's scary, even when you feel like there's no one around you that resonates with you, even when you feel like people don't get it or they mock you, you know, whatever it might be, there's always an outlier. Oh, this is a strong message coming through for you, pile number one. There is always an outlier in, I swear, every family. There's always an outlier. There is someone that doesn't fit the cookie cutter mold and or they don't really take on all these personifications that have been pushed on them and they start to shift. And a lot of people in the family unit or the friendship units, if you don't really have a, a family units, everybody in that family or friendship unit might mock you, might tell you that you're crazy or that that's not how the world works or you're weird. But the outlier is usually the one that is doing the most intense work on themselves. And they are the ones that are here to heal a generational line. And I feel like pile number one, that is a huge part of your purpose here is to not only help heal the collective, heal the planet, you are all natural born healers. I really do believe that you're natural born healers, but you are also here to show other people the way, even though right now, and I mean, right now is your time. I feel like there has never been a time on the planet more with more people waking up to their true purpose, more people standing up for who they are, more light workers coming out of the woodwork, more people into esoteric knowledge. There has never been a more powerful time on the planet to come out of out of your shell and into your purpose. So, I mean, we're moving into the age of Aquarius, right? I want to say we may already be in the age of Aquarius. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'm going through sidereal study right now. And so eventually I will teach you more about sidereal astrology on this channel, but I'm still very much a student. So don't quote me on that. Um, oh my gosh. And these last two cards that I have, I want to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm, they're happy tears. They're not sad tears. They're like, I'm so happy for you if you chose this pile. Um, we have prosperity, which I love. Actually, let me read this on this card. We have prosperity, which I literally just said, this will bring you nothing but prosperity. The frequency of prosperity supports our feeling. Uh, supports our feeling of well-being by allowing the inclusion of everything that makes our body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit sing. It invites us to express ourselves in joy and in celebration of abundance and riches that the universe provides. So, uh, I literally got the chills again. I don't think I've had such a strong reading in like several readings this month. This I think has been the most powerful reading that has come through. And I set some intentions before reading these cards, but like, dang. Um, so with this prosperity card, not only is this going to bring you prosperity, being your most authentic self, going out there and doing that, but some of you also need to know that money doesn't come from people. It doesn't. Money comes from source. Money is just energy. Like, yes, we have these physical pieces of paper that are representational of that energy, but money comes from source. So many of you, I feel like are telling yourself that you can't make money just by being your authentic self because it would be taking money from others. And that's not true. Money comes from source. So all you must do is increase your relationship with source. Now, whatever that is for you, for some of you, that's God. For some of you, that's the universe. That's oneness consciousness. That's um, um, your spirit guides, your archangels, you know, whatever that divine source energy is for you, or it's Gaia, you know, it's mother earth, whatever that divine source energy is for you. That's the connection that you need to work on the most right now to unlock your fullest career potential. Um, and we also have allowance, the frequency of allowance 
invites us to be open to whatever comes our way without judgment, without opinion, without fear, and without resistance. When we allow, the universe becomes our partner in the wondrous dance of existence and expansion. So many of you might be asking like, oh, this is so great, Chloe. Like, I'm so happy all these blessings are coming for me and this is all going to happen. But I don't feel it or I don't see it or I don't know what to do. I'm here to tell you, you have the easiest job in the world. Literally, you have the easiest job in the world. All Well, it's not easy. If you've not been used to it, it's not easy. But it can be easy if you allow it to be. All you have to do is allow it. Allow it to come to you. Don't chase it. Don't seek it. Allow it to come to you. It's those sparks of ideas that you have that you're like, oh my gosh, I have to do this right now because it just, I'm so creatively in tune or I'm so, you know, it's those intuitive hits that say, oh, that's a cool idea. You know, write those ideas down. They come to you. Those ideas are also source and they're looking for a host and you are the host if it comes to you and sparks you. So just allow, 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 and give yourself the allowance to be who you are. And I love this reading so much, pile number one. I'm telling you, this is one of the most powerful readings I've done in a long time. I just, I feel like I need to go outside and like run around the block. <laughs> um, but to like let some of that energy off. But I love this so, so much for you, pile number one. Thank you so very much. Please do not forget to claim your blessing as this burns down. It will go out into the universe to come back to you. Uh, if you want any of the decks that I use today, all of the card links are down below in the order that they appear. And if you feel called to, if this reading resonated with you, it is never an expectation, but always appreciated. I have my Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal listed down below. I do accept tips. And um, with that, you know, many of you, because of all of you and what many of you have given to me, we purchase decks, we purchase candles, you know, I always pour it back into my business and what we're creating here together. So thank you to those of you that have felt called to do that. Again, it's never an expectation, but I do really appreciate it. So I love you all so much, pile number one. Literally, I am sending you like the biggest, warmest heart chakra energy that I can with these cards. Like take that energy and do something magical with it because... I'm telling you, you have a gift and what is coming for you in your career is going to be so beautiful and the world needs it. The world truly needs it. So I will catch you all in a future reading. Love you so much. Bye. Hello there, pile number two, and welcome to your career reading. This is going to be your, basically, if you're in a career right now and you're unsatisfied, this is going to give you some insight into where to go next or what to do next. And uh, if you are not in a career that you're satisfied with, um, or excuse me, if you are in a career you're satisfied with, it's going to give you insight into that. And if you're not, it will give you insight into what your next move would be. Also, I apologize. The light is weird today. I've got sun right right here. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> um, I'm filming a little earlier than I normally would today. So um, I also want to say before we get started, my cat in the background, uh, he's having a hard time today. It's been a stormy day. The sun looks like it's coming out though. Um, it's been a stormy day and he has been having an absolute hard time. So he's been hollering around the back. He's okay. Uh, we're making sure that he's well taken care of. But um, just to let you know, if you hear any hollering from my cat, uh, it's because there's a storm brewing outside and he hates it. So um, anyways, let's go ahead and get into your reading. So first and foremost, if you chose this pile, what we like to do on my channel is intention candle setting before we get into the readings. And basically what that is, is I want you to think of a person, a place, a thing, a feeling that you want to bring into your life. Um, it, like I said, it could be a feeling as well, like an emotional uh, stance on where you would like to be right now. I don't know why that's coming through, but maybe some of you do want that. Um, now green, what it stands for is abundance money. Um, it also corresponds to the Zodiac signs, uh, to me, all of the earth signs. So this would be Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. So you may want to bring one of them into your life. Uh, it also stands for the heart chakra, green and pink are heart chakra colors. So uh, maybe you want to connect a little bit more to your heart chakra. 
And uh, so if you do, that could be a good intention, but you don't have to do any intention that I've mentioned. You can choose literally whatever you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get this set up for you here. It's gonna burn the bottom a smidge so that we can get a nice, clean, straight burn. And what I like to do is actually take a deep breath on the intention. So I will go ahead and put my hands over my heart because I really like to connect with that heart chakra energy. And I will just take a deep breath on my intention in through the nose and out through the mouth. So. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and light this for you. And we've got kind of a dim flame. She's growing though. She's growing. It was a little slow growth. Um, but we do, we did kind of have a little bit of a dim flame starting out. So I do feel like many of you, it could be that you're feeling that way. You're feeling a little bit dim. Um, it also could just be that your manifestation, whatever you set intention for with this candle, it might take a little more time to come in. Like it might not be in the next few days. It might be a few weeks or even a month I'm hearing. So just keep in mind, you know, remember what intention you set here. And, uh, it just looks like it might come in a little bit slower for some of you. I'm also hearing two months for some reason. So some of you, it might be two months, but, um, that intention will come to you. So, uh, let me go ahead and just push this up over here into the top of our reading. Um, sometimes the candle flames will interact with the reading. So I like to keep it pretty close by and let's go ahead and see pile number two, what we have for you. So right away for the career, we have the 10th house. Love that. We have the Nine of Swords. We have the Page of Cups. And we have the Nine of Wands. So a double nine. So I want to highlight that first because it was the first thing I really noticed was that double nine. Nine is the energy to me of faith. Nine is the energy of believing. Nine, nine corresponds to the astrological sign Sagittarius and that to me is really what Sagittarius brings is like this very wise energy, this faithful, wise energy. And so with, I mean, it's also a fun energy too, let's be real, <laughs> but nine is like the great philosopher. So I feel like for you with that double nine energy coming into us, it's, you need to believe in yourself. Like there's no other way for me to put that for you is you just need to believe in yourself a little bit more. And I know you might be thinking like, Oh, but I can't, like if I could, I would be doing it. And ultimately you are right on the precipice of a breakthrough because with a nine of swords and a nine of wands, it comes right before the completion. 10 in tarot is the completion. So you're literally right. You're like seconds away from a major breakthrough. So I feel, and maybe it's those two months, you're two months away from a breakthrough at most. Um, you know, you're right on the edge. You've been maybe, I, th I feel like you're someone that's been doing things and good things have been happening for you. Um, I feel like many of you also have this drive to want more money. And I want to tell you something. I feel like a lot of people come to me. I'm a Taurus sun and a Taurus moon. So personal finance is something that I probably have a little bit of an obsession with. Um, and also, um, just personal finance in general. Like I have a lot of financial goals. Those are probably some of my biggest goals in business is financial goals. And I want to tell you something, you know, we treat money in society. Like it's something that if people have it, they talk crap about you and judge you. And if you don't have it, they talk crap about you and they judge you. And I feel like you're someone that has maybe come into this life wanting more for yourself, wanting a life of more luxury, wanting a life that just gives you more affluent, more like you're somebody that maybe has dreamt literally I'm hearing of like living on the Upper East Side like you watched freaking Gossip Girl growing up you you um have always kind of looked and connected with this like this like very I want to say like high society vibration and I I want you to know if that sounds anything like you. Now, that's not going to be a message for everyone in this pile. But for those of you that that sounds like you, you've always connected with that, but you feel guilty for connecting with it, don't. There is definitely a lot of beliefs around money 
that people feel like, and this could be you or somebody that raised you, or, you know, it just could have been a belief that was programmed in that, like, basically having money makes you evil or that money is evil. And so you think you're going to become a bad person, even if it's on a subconscious level, you think you're going to become a bad person if you make too much money, quote unquote, too much money. But I, I challenge you to really think about that and ask yourself what you having a lot of money could do. How would you, if you were given like a billion dollars tomorrow, what would you do with it? Would you give a bunch of money to all of your favorite charities? Would you set your family up for life? Would you pay somebody's hospital bill off because you could? Would you, this is what I'm saying, like money can do so much good. And we all like to blame this piece of paper. Like it causes all these problems for us when it really doesn't. It actually can allow us to live a life that transcends money, meaning money has the potential that when you have it, you can make decisions that aren't based on financial gain. You can make decisions that are in full alignment with yourself. Now, I'm not telling you that there aren't people that have a crap load of money that are not evil. Obviously, that is true, but that has more to do with the person. It has nothing to do with the money. So please know that if you gain this wealth in your lifetime, you're not going to become an evil, terrible person. You, I believe everybody that finds my channel, many of you are people that are in a higher vibration. You are people that are light workers that have strong heart chakra energy. Like, I really believe anybody that is hearing this message right now, you wouldn't want to do bad things with it. You wouldn't want to hurt people with it. You would want to help people. So just really keep that in mind. Um, and with a page of cups, I feel like you're a little bit more timid. Like you are someone that, not that you don't have like a mouth on you or something, but um, I literally felt the energy when I said you're timid. Somebody, one of y'all was like, uh-uh, I have a mouthpiece on me, honey. Like, no. Um, I feel that you're maybe more timid in in sharing of of who you are to people and it's, it's in your better interest to be exactly who you are, because that is why you came here. Like, that's why you're here is to be that authentic person. And I really do. I'm getting this strong message that you are having a harder time believing in yourself, that you can have this level of money, this level of career, this level, like the 10 of pentacles is not small. This is money for like a legacy. This is money that you can have it and then it's going to pass down. And some of you that are listening to this might already have that. You might be in a family that like you already have money because it's always been around you, but you don't want to be like the other members of your family that use this money in a very unkind way. And I want you to know that you can be that different person. You can be somebody that does it differently. And the reason I earlier said, again, I want to go back to this, that you don't believe in yourself is because we have these two nines that tell me that there's a lack of personal faith, but we also have the page of cups and the page of cups is about expecting good things. It's about expecting things to work out in your favor. It's about just, I mean, there's this beautiful girl sitting here looking at this cup, right? Staring into this cup. And it's like, oh, there's a, there's a fish coming out of the cup. And it's, it's like, oh my gosh, why is there a fish in my, in my water cup? That's so random. Like you need to expect good things for yourself. Many of you, I feel like have maybe also been in a situation where it's the same thing day in and day out. Like your career is very like monotonous or is monotonous the word I'm looking for? Your career is very like same. Every day is the same and you don't expect things to ever change, but you need to start expecting different uh, because I do feel that different is definitely coming. So anywho, let's go ahead and move on. I feel like I spent a lot of time in those first uh, four cards, but we have rebel challenges authority to affect social change, rejects spirit, spiritual systems that do not serve the inner needs. So I also am hearing for some of you, you need to go against the grain religiously. Um, you might, I feel like many of you also come from a family line where everything has been done a certain way. And I'm hearing that some of you are meant to like inherit a family business, but you don't want it. So for those of you that that message speaks to you, like 
you are the rebel. You are not supposed to take it on. You are not supposed to take on the beliefs of the family. You are supposed to do things differently because you have the rebel energy. Now, we also have Medeus or Miser, Miser, Miser. Um, and this is entrepreneurial or creative ability to turn anything to gold, delight in sharing life's riches. What did I literally just say? I literally just said to you that when it comes to money, you need to ask yourself what good could money do for you instead of pretending or acting or thinking that it's this bad thing because it's actually about sharing the riches that you have with those around you and caring for them. Um, so I do feel that for many of you, you are meant to like, gosh, I feel like pile number one, you might want to also listen to pile number one. Because we talked a lot about entrepreneurship in that reading as well. And because we have this card that is more entrepreneurial energy, I do feel that you are meant to go and do something new. You're not meant to do what has been given to you. And we do have a really strong flame going right now. Oh, <laughs> um, last time I got close to a candle like that and it moved, somebody told me in the comments that I moved it with my chi energy. And I was like, I need to study that more. I don't know enough about that. But that was cool. Um, and then we also have Monk Nun, and that is selfless devotion and single-minded dedication to spirit. So many of you that have been walking a spiritual path that is not in alignment with you or you've questioned it or it doesn't really sound like, I feel like this is actually for like many people on the planet right now. I feel like a lot of older religion is kind of moving away and we're all moving in a way that is more um, and that's not to say that if you're religious, like you should leave, that's obviously not going to be a message for everyone. But I do feel that many people are moving away from that type of religious structure. Um, and people are moving more in alignment with themselves. And I feel like that is a big part of your career is to move in a way that is in higher alignment with yourself and move in a way that is more, like it connects you to your own spirit. So if you feel like you're doing things out of tradition or I'm really hearing like family has a strong influence over you, pile number two, and you need to break away. And it doesn't mean that you can't love your family, that you can't see them or you need to cut them out. I mean, for some of you, that might be the case. It doesn't mean that you need to just cut them out. But I do feel that many of you, your biggest struggle is family because that 10 of pentacles to me is like, the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups, really, which we didn't pull Ten of Cups, but they're both, to me, strong family energy. And especially the Ten of Pentacles, though, is like, to me, it can be a strong expectations from family to act a certain way. And so many of you, you need to break out of that. And if it means kind of holding them at a distance for a while while you figure yourself out ultimately in your career, that's going to be good for you. Um, especially those of you that are trying to launch new businesses um, or you're trying to go into a new field. For some reason, I just heard from many of you that you need to go into the study of psychology. I don't know why that just came out. I heard it. Uh, many of you need to look into the study of psychology because it's about connecting people back to themselves, not fixing people, but connecting them back to themselves. And because you are going to go through this same journey or you already have, you have a, such a way of helping others because you've been through it. And wow, this is awesome. Okay, sorry. I just, I feel really happy. The pile number one got me in my feelings. Uh, I feel really like happy for all of you. So the next few cards we have, we have water element sensing. So this is why I said, I feel like going into the field of psychology or maybe some of you already are in it. Like it is a good calling for you. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be a therapist forever um, or that you're going to teach in a traditional way. But because you have such a, I feel like many of you have clear sense. Like you have a clairvoyant gift of sensing things. And because of that, you're also really good at helping others. You're really good at coaching them through their life struggles and because you, I feel like have struggled so much or are struggling so much, that's what's going to make you different from others who haven't. And it's going to make you believe in people so much more. Like, please know, and even if you can't see it right now, your biggest burdens right now 
are going to be your biggest blessings in the future. And I know that's one of those like fortune cookie bullcrap things that like sometimes people say, but I'm really hearing that for you, pile number two, that your biggest blessings are going to be from some of your biggest struggles. Because you have struggled, you are going to know different. And you are going to know that like survival is a possibility and it is something that you can help others move through. I'm really feeling like y'all are like the helpers. Like pile number two, y'all are the helpers for sure. We also have Chiron healing. You, yeah, definitely listen to pile number one if you chose pile number two because I, pile number one was also about like being healers for the world. And we literally pulled Chiron healing. And this to me is about you go, going through and transcending your own personal healing so that you can actually do that for other people, because you're going to find such a love for finding your own path and being the rebel, because it's hard at first. It's hard to be the rebel in any family system. I'm hearing family for a lot of you in any family system. It's hard to be the rebel. But for you, it will become your strength. So I love that. Um, so with Chiron healing, it's going to make you more of a gifted healer. And honestly, I believe that you are meant to make money from this. You are like, this is a career path for you in healing. Like I was saying, if you're interested in psychology, that doesn't mean that you will be a psychologist, like, or you will be, excuse me, or you will be a therapist. This also, you could do so many things with that. If you decide to go into the realm of psychology. Um, I mean, I myself am going into school for a degree in psychology, but I have no desire to be a therapist. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to bring you more psychology because I don't know if many of you knew this, but some therapists actually have tarot cards like in their sessions. Like tarot is such a great way to help you connect with yourself and for many of you pound number two i'm hearing that that's something you should consider if it's something you feel drawn to learning more about the tarot and studying it and becoming proficient in it like if you already have a natural knack and a draw like that's your strong suit you should go with it um but there are so many things you can do in the realm of psychology. You can write books. You can be a therapist. Um, you can serve your community. You can be a tarot card reader. I believe, like I said, that psychology can run hand in hand with divination. It's like really helpful to have that background. So there are so many things you can do with that. Um, now, the last two things we have for you are fertility. The frequency of fertility invites us to be more open, more courageous, more creative, and more joyful than we were before. It activates the potential for something beautiful to grow from our consciousness into a new and grander expression of ourselves. So many of you, if you're in school, I'm really hearing that you're not going to go into that career. And this isn't going to be for everybody. Like, I don't want you to drop out of school tomorrow. Okay. Because I said, no, don't drop out of school, finish that degree. Whatever you're in school for right now, I don't believe that's going to be your final. Like that's not the end. It's something that you need to broaden your spectrum and to make you set apart in what you decide to do. Because what you are meant to do is go in another direction. Like being the rebel in a career stance also means that you do things so radically differently that people are just like stunned in the best way. Like I believe that you, pile number two, are people that are meant to create a new way of being, a new way of doing something like there's something new you're bringing into the world. And if it is psychology and that really struck a chord with you, I believe that like you're going to change the way that psychology even runs. Like y'all have a big purpose in changing something through your own personal growth. It's going to come out. Um, but whatever degree you're currently going for, I don't believe that that's the career you're going to end up in. I feel like it's a stepping stone to where you're going to be because, and also some of you, some of you, um, with this, first, this is a very specific message It's not for everyone, but some of you are meant to just be a parent. Like, and I don't say that and like, Oh, you're just going to be a parent. No parenting is hard freaking work. And all y'all parents, I clap for you. Okay. I'm clapping. Um, not too loud. Cause I don't want to pop the mic, but parenting is hard work. 
But that like ultimately your purpose is to raise a generation that is going to do this. And like I said, that's not for everybody, but for some of you, that's part of it. Um, now we also have belief with the number 11. I don't know why I chose to say 11. I didn't tell you the numbers of any of the other cards, but, um, I think some of you, your lucky number might be 11, but the frequency of belief supports our sense of self-worth based on our gifts and talents and strong connection to source that literally just reiterates this entire reading. Like literally I talked about, you need to have more faith in yourself, more belief in yourself. You need to go on your own spiritual path and not follow what's been carved out for you. I don't even feel like I need to say anything about that card. Just believe in yourself. And I know, I, like I said, I can sit there and shout that as much as I want, but until you're ready to start making changes to come more into yourself, that's when it's going to start to happen. And it's not like you need to do the work. Like people say that too, like you need to do the work, but then they don't explain what the work is. The work is coming back to yourself. It's asking yourself the important questions for your own self-development. It's asking yourself, who am I? Who do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to present to the world? And what are my strong suits? What are my talents? What kind of habits do, um, do I need to have to be the version of myself that I desire to be, you know, and then it's working towards those things. So, and there's so much more to it than that, but I hope this was helpful pile number two. I don't really feel like we got like, I mean, we did get a little specific, but I do feel like this will help. Please do not forget to claim your blessing. I'm going to let this burn all the way down for you. Uh, don't forget that uh, any cards that you see here that you've liked today, they're all listed down below in the order that they appear. Um, if you would like to, I would sure appreciate it. Follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. I am at Chloe Taylor. And lastly, it is never expected, but always appreciated. Uh, if you would like to tip me because the reading resonated, I have my cash app Venmo and PayPal listed down below. Uh, often I purchase new decks or candles or things so we can do more of this on the channel with the abundance that you give me. I literally pour all of it back into what we're creating. So if you feel called to, I really do appreciate it. But again, it is never an expectation and I love you all so, so much. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Hello there, pal number three, and welcome to your career reading. Now, if you are in a career that you are dissatisfied with, I apologize. Literally all of my cats are in this room right now. I don't know why. They all just want to be by me. So I apologize if you hear collars shaking, meowing. I have three cats. Um, and they all just want to be close. And one of my cats is having a hard time today because it's storming outside. So I apologize in advance if you hear any meowing, but they're around. So if you are in a career that you feel stuck in and you want something different, I hope this reading will provide some insight. Or if you just want to embark on a career path, I hope this gives you some clarity. So what we always like to start my readings with are intention candles. And if you chose this pile, you chose the white candle. White candles are actually universal. So um, literally you can set an intention for anything with this candle. Uh, a lot of times I use these candles as intentions for my spirit guides personally, or like archangels or the divine, but you can set literally any intention. White is known for being universal and known for just basically having clearness, like the clarity to have anything. So Go ahead and think of something that you want to bring into your life, be it a person, a place, a thing, a feeling, and uh, go ahead and just focus on that for a moment while I get this set up for you. I'm just going to make sure we get a nice clean burn. All right. And what I like to do is actually take a deep breath. So I'll put my hands over my heart and I will breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth on this intention. So let's go ahead and do that together. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and light it for you. Ooh, oh, this flame did kind of dim out just a little bit. Nothing crazy, but it did kind of start out big and then it got small and then it got big again. So I feel like for you in your career path, that might be how you receive downloads for your career is kind of like, oh, I have a huge spark of inspiration. And maybe right now you're kind of on the down climb, but just know that that spark is going to come. Ooh, this is a big flame. 
the flame is like, I know you can't really see it as well from that angle maybe, but this flame is like, it's, it's bigger than average. <laughs> she bigger than average. Okay. So, um, I do feel like your intention, whatever you set intention for will be coming in relatively quickly on that notion, but we're going to go ahead and scoot this right up to the corner of the reading so we can still keep our eyes on it, but let's go ahead and see what the cards have for you today. And let's see, we have the sun. We have the eight of pentacles. We have the king of cups and the 10 of swords. All right. So right off the bat, what I can tell you is some of you might be in your dream career. And this is like, you really do love your career, but I need to tell you something. You need to slow down. Those of you that are working yourself to the bone, it's going to catch up with you and you are going to be exhausted. Right now, if you're watching this as it goes live, now my videos are timeless, so it doesn't matter when the spirit calls or spirit rather calls for you to see the reading. Um, it's always going to apply for that phase of your life. But um, if you're watching this as it goes live, we are in the middle of Mars retrograde until about the middle of November. And with Mars retrograde, if you do not slow down, it will catch up with you in particular during a Mars retrograde because Mars is the warrior. Um, Mars is a lot of times how we have a drive to move forward on something in our birth charts. And so if we don't kind of dial it back and work with the planetary energy, it will catch up to us. So the reason I say that many of you might actually be in a good career track or in a career field, or maybe you're starting school on a career field that you're interested in. Um, I think this is a good thing because we have the sun. So I feel like when the sun is present, this to me is a strong indication that you're already on the right path. You're already moving in a way that is representational of the person you want to be. This is a strong victory. And with the eight of pentacles, you're not afraid of hard work. You've maybe been working really hard for this and it's a good thing. However, when we have that 10 of swords coming out, you're working yourself too hard. You're doing the most, you're doing too much. So um, with the King of Cups, that to me is really indicating that maybe start to think more like a King of Cups mindset, which a King of Cups mindset is ruling from the heart, knowing when to speed up, knowing when to slow down, and really trusting your intuition and really just trusting yourself. Also, again, my cats, I'm so sorry. They're in here chasing each other around and one of them just wants to play and the other one really doesn't. Uh, maybe this is representational of what's going on internally for you. Maybe part of you really wants to play and part of you is like fighting it. Um, but stop fighting it. Make the like a true good leader is always going to put themselves first. And I don't mean that in like a narcissistic way. Boys, please. I'm so sorry. Um, but not in like a narcissistic way, but in a, you know how to fill your cup up first so that you can fill others appropriately. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to go break up a little cat fight, if you will, because like I said, one of my cats is having a hard time today. The other one just wants to play and it was causing a fight. So sorry about that. Um, as I was saying, really taking on that King of Cups energy, that King of Cups energy is really saying like, you know, when to flow and when to move, like when to force, when to flow. And so I really do feel that if you don't slow down, it will catch up with you in, especially in the career. And you're going to feel so burnt out. Like you have nothing left to give. Moving on, we have network, uh, which says, Enhances unity through the sharing of information, uh, engenders social awareness and empathy. So you might be somebody who is like really great at networking. Some of you might even be wanting to be YouTubers in the YouTube space. I don't know why that's coming out, but it is. Um, it, some of you may actually want to be YouTubers specifically and with being a YouTuber, you do have to kind of have somewhat of a strong suit in networking. It really depends on what kind of YouTuber you want to be. Um, and with that, you actually have a skill for it. And it might be the thing that you're uh, scared of, like in terms of working, maybe you're somebody that 
like you are good at networking and that is natural to you, or you're someone that doesn't feel like it comes natural to you and you're scared of it. You're scared to reach out more, be yourself in front of other people or like really kind of make those like work connections, I suppose. We also have victim, which says prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. So <clears throat> this is actually really beautiful. Um, when we talk about victim mentality, um, I'm never going to promote toxic positivity on my channel. I'm just not into that. I know what that looks like. And never are you going to catch me being like, just be this way. <laughs> But when it comes to the victim card and victim mentality, I want you to know that if you feel like a victim to your life right now, I want you to know that victimhood is part of the journey. You have to stop being so hard on yourself for even just being a victim. Because in order to get to the survival part of victimhood, you have to let yourself be a victim. But some of you also have been a victim for too long and you actually are being stagnant there. And this is what that Ten of Swords is about. Ten of Swords is about is victim mentality. It's this poor me, pity me, this sucks, this awful thing happened. And you just are letting yourself live there. And like I said, I want to be very clear. Victim mentality is part of it. We're not here for victim blaming on this channel either. Victim mentality is part of it part of it. But in order to come out as a survivor, you have to allow yourself to feel those things and then move on. Uh, I feel like something really important that was said, um, it was actually a podcast I was listening to um, a, quite a while ago. I was listening to the Pretty Basic podcast. I don't know why Spirit is telling me to tell you this story, but here we are. Uh, I was listening to Pretty Basic while I was cleaning a couple of weeks ago. And um one of the things that they said really stuck with me, and I feel like maybe it will stick with you, is it's one thing when you want to talk about a problem that you're having or a problem that you've had with someone or maybe like one or two people because you want like some clear advice or some support. But when you're literally telling 10, 20, 30 people about your problems and it's always coming out you need to sit down and have an honest conversation with yourself about what parts of yourself are needing to be validated and asking yourself how you can start to validate those parts of you because it becomes this like manic, um, this, I don't want to say, how do I even, not manic, manic maybe isn't the, the appropriate word, but it becomes this like, almost like this toxic pool of you just getting more and more and more validation for your problems instead of actually validating them yourself because it's 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 not wrong to want or seek validation from others we're all guilty of it but when it becomes what your entire life is about especially in the career field as you're networking and growing maybe there's something to consider there. Maybe there's something to look deeper into and to allow yourself the space and the grace to heal. I feel like many of you, the message here is that you need to allow yourself to heal so that you can expand on your career because you're not in a place where you are feeling strong enough to even do so. And it's going to take time. Like I said, we don't do victim blaming. We don't do toxic positivity on this channel. So it's going to take time and you need to allow yourself to have that time. I feel like many of you that are sharing with everyone who will listen, it's a strong indication that you need to actually slow down and let yourself feel it. It's like you think maybe getting it out there and projecting it onto others or saying it to others is going to release it from you or make you feel better, but it's not. You have to go inside and figure out what is happening in here and learn to validate your own experience instead of waiting for somebody else to validate it for you. And that's the hard truth, I feel like, for anybody who has gone through something extremely difficult. Um, I attribute a lot of my own personal self-growth. You know, I've been that person. I... I... Spirit always wants me to talk about this and I always put it back, put it off because it's difficult for me, but I've been in situations where I have been attached to a narcissist and not romantically, 
Um, I don't want to say too much, but I've been in a situation around a narcissist for years and years and years and years and years of my life. And with that, there is a victim mentality that comes with it. When you finally figure it out that that has been happening. I lived my life for years in victimhood, telling other people about this person as often as they would listen. And I finally had to get to the point and ask myself, why am I telling all these other people about this? Why, why do I feel this strong need to convince other people around me that this person is so terrible when I know who I am? I know what they did. It doesn't invalidate my experience. I just need to move on. I need to stop living in this place where I'm just feeling so sorry for myself. I hope that makes sense. And again, I'm not telling you that you need to just get over it because that's not like spirit says, "Uh, -uh we're not here for that. I'm not telling you, you just need to get over it. I'm telling you that you need to start to allow yourself to heal because it's holding you back even in your career. And right now the planetary energies are forcing us to sit with hard emotions. They are forcing us to really take an in-depth look at our lives and everybody's going through it collectively. This is not just it's only affecting people that believe in astrology. The planet's energies affect everyone. And so many of us are dealing with these old wounds. And I'm here to tell you, Spirit is here to tell you, you are a survivor. You are not a victim. And it is this, it is this victimhood and then moving into the way of the survivor that is going to bring you to a stronger part of your career and pursuing it. It's going to allow you to connect and network better with other people. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> I feel like I spent a lot of time talking about that. Um, so we also have seeker thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are. So you, somebody, I feel like you are somebody I feel like who is truly, excuse me, I'm truly a free spirit. You're truly somebody that you really have a deep thirst for knowledge. You want to experience truth in the world and you will search your life endlessly until you feel like you found it, even if you never do. And I don't want you to think of that like it's a negative or like it's a downside because exploring your truth and changing your truth constantly, I think is actually a really beautiful path because it allows you to experience people and places and cultures and experiences that maybe you wouldn't have had otherwise. So I do feel that you're somebody that your career path might change and you're someone that or like, not that it's going to change because again, I feel like you are in a good place for it. Like part of what you're doing now is going to carry you into the future with your career, but you're someone that maybe you need to find a way to make this career, give you a little more freedom. Like you're not somebody who is meant to go for a certain amount of hours, for a certain amount of days, you need to have more flexibility in the way that you work. And so there are jobs that will accommodate that, whether it is a career path with a company or you starting your own company, there is always a way to make that a reality. Don't ever let society tell you that you can't work in a corporation, but also make your own hours because there are jobs in corporations or working for others where that is a possibility. So and honestly, I feel like you're a true asset to whatever you decide to do, especially with the power to network. That is a skill that not a lot of people have. I'm a terrible networker. Like, honestly, I feel like that was why the gaming industry didn't work out for me is because I suck at networking. Um, I'm way better as like a solitary person. I work better on my own. Um, and so like networking, trust me, that is a skill that not everybody has. And even if you don't feel like it's something you have, I promise you, if it's coming out in this reading, you do, it's just something you may have to work on. Uh, so next up we do have lunar eclipse change. And we do have ninth house faith. So for those of you that picked this pile, definitely check out pile number two, because we had a lot of nine, nine number energy in pile number two that talked a lot about, um, faith and talked a lot about having faith for change and such. Um, so I do feel for you with the ninth house and change, this is kind of exactly what I was just talking about. Like society likes to teach us that there's only one way to do things. Like you can only teach, um, 
this and this if you have a degree, which like for some things, yes. Like obviously we don't want people that are doing like brain surgery to not have a degree. I'm just saying. Um, but I feel like there are things that are changing, especially as we're moving through the age of Aquarius and we're seeing people coming out as their authentic selves. And we're seeing this beautiful uprise of truly what I feel like is like a golden age we're coming into. I know it seems rough right now, especially in 2020. It seems rough right now, but I really, and I'm getting goosebumps literally from head to toe, like the chills. We're coming into a time that is going to be such a golden age. And I do believe in my lifetime, I will get to experience this. Um, it might be a little later, like it might be a few years from now, but I do believe we are moving into a golden age. And with that, a lot of these norms that we have set up are not going to stay the same. Like, I feel like even now it's already being changed. The way that we work career-wise is being changed. People are realizing that working eight, nine hours a day at a corporation is not good for humanity. We're realizing, I mean, there's even been studies that have been done on this, that they've let people work for like six hour days. And they've noticed that people get the same amount of work done in six hours that they're giving them eight to nine hours to do. So I do feel like... There is change that is going to be coming in your career path, whether you want it or not. Um, change is going to be coming and it might be a little bit scary at first, but you need to just have, hold on to the faith, hold on to the wisdom that you've obtained. Basically buckle up is what I'm hearing from spirit. Buckle up. Things might get a little haywire here, but rely on your strength in faith. And if you don't feel like you have any personal faith, and I'm not talking about like organized religion faith. I mean, if that's your, if that's your thing, awesome. Love that for you. That's fine too. Um, but I'm talking about just like personalized faith. Faith is not a religious thing. It doesn't have to be. Faith is something where you just believe in yourself. You believe in you know, the, uh, your, the power to change your reality. You believe in the power for you to go out and do things. You believe in the power that you have to heal, to become a true survivor. And some of you might already be survivors and you're not in victimhood. I want to also say that spirit, just want to remind me really quick. Um, but I do feel that with faith, that's going to be like your saving grace during this. And also, uh, I don't think this is going to be for everyone, but some of you I'm hearing are also about to get let go. Not everyone. So please don't panic about that if it doesn't apply to you. I feel like some of you are, you feel like you're working in your dream career and you've worked really hard, but you're about to be <clears throat> let go, whether it be due to everything that's going on in the world and they like less people, they just need less people or like, honestly, it's going to be for your highest good. If, if you are let go from a position that you really enjoy, it's going to be for your highest good. Like you're going to find something better. And that's why this faith is coming out next to change. So I'm just saying, yeah, definitely. Sorry. I really want it. I'm like, are we sure spirit about that? Yep. We're sure. <clears throat> But yeah, some of you I am hearing are maybe going to be being let go from where you're at and just know that it really is going to be, you're going to find something that's in higher alignment with you. So don't be stressed if that happens, like something better is coming. And we also have conception, which is the frequency of conception invites us to bring our consciousness to our origin, the place where everything in creation begins. It helps us to remember the infinite potential and possibilities of this space that we can manifest through our own focused awareness and intention. And then we also have emergency. The frequency of emergency invites us to approach our reality with a childlike attitude of innocence and wonderment and to watch and celebrate the beauty that unfolds from that place. So, or excuse me, not emergency, it's emergence. Um, so I don't know why emergency came out though. I don't feel like when mistakes like that are made that they're actually mistakes. I feel like this is going to feel like an emergency for some of you that are going to have that job change or the loss of a job or a career path. It's going to feel like an emergency, but it's actually going to connect you back to yourself. It's going to connect you back to who you're meant to be in this life. And it's going to be a wake up call. So 
prepare yourselves uh, for that if you feel like that applies to you. Like I said, not everybody that picked this pile is going to lose their job. That might even only be one person. So, um, but I do feel like there is going to be this like sense of urgency that you feel like you have to have, but it's actually going to bring you back to asking yourself, what do I enjoy doing? What makes me happy? What do I feel like I could do every day if money was no object and I didn't need it? What, how would I spend my time? And like, I feel like those are also valuable questions if you chose this pile to be asking yourself. And I also feel like many of you are going to conceive new ideas. Um, also with conception, I always feel like this applies to some of you also might be getting pregnant. Um, so if that's something that you're wanting, congratulations. Um, if it's something you're not wanting, just be really aware, please, you know, do what you got to do. Um, some of you might be conceiving and that is going to change your career dramatically, uh, because you are going to want to maybe have more time with this child or, um, it also could be that you're going to have to like maneuver how that child is going to fit in because you want to still have that career. So whatever that is for you. Um, now with emergence, please, I don't remember which pile it was that allowance came out. It might've been pile number one. I feel like every pile today has been like kind of linked, but definitely pile number two with the nine energy. Um, but pile number one talked a little bit about allowance. And I guess I just want to touch a little more on that as well. But with emergence and allowance, like you also have to allow new things to emerge. And sometimes that takes time. It's not like, this is why when we talk about manifestation and manifesting your reality, you don't just literally think about diamonds and a diamond falls into your hand because we don't have instant manifestation in this third dimensional reality. However, it's a good thing that that doesn't happen because think about all the terrible things that cross your mind or you obsess about that don't happen. And it's because we have this window. We have this beautiful grace period that sometimes depending on your intention and the actions behind it, it can be a bigger window or a shorter window. But it's a good thing that things do not manifest instantaneously sometimes because sometimes we get exactly what we wished for and it's not what we wanted. So allow things to emerge, allow things to come in naturally. And, you know, also please take care of yourselves. If you feel like what I said about victim mentality and victimhood really spoke to you, please, please, please take some time to take care of yourself. Take time to you know, don't be afraid to let others listen to what you have to say. Just really take time out to ask yourself how you want to feel, how the version of you that is healed from whatever this situation is, how would they act? How would they move? You know, it's not, it's not always about getting justice with the people that hurt us. It's about forgiving them and not forgiving them. Like it's a get out of jail free card, or it's a free pass to do it again, but it's, it's forgiveness is allowing peace, allowing yourself to have peace from what is holding you back. So I feel like this reading was kind of all over the place. If I'm honest with you, I got a lot of different messages. Like my brain is a little bit tired. I'm going to have to take a break before I do the next pile, but I hope that this reading resonated. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing for some reason from spirit that you really need to hear pile number three. I'm so proud of you. Like your guides and your angels and me, they want you to know and I want you to know that we and they and I, we're so proud of you. You have done so much to be who you are today. You've gone through so much and we're so proud of every bit of progress that you've made. So please claim your blessing. Do not forget to check the description bar. If you like any of the cards that you saw today, they're always linked down below in the order they appear. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. If you would like to, I'm at Chloe Taylor. And if this message resonated with you and you feel called to do so, it is never an expectation, but always appreciated. I do have my cash app Venmo and PayPal listed all down below for you. So if you feel the need to tip me for this reading again, I do appreciate it, but I don't expect it from you. And, um, 
Honestly, that is how we have purchased so many decks for all the readings that I do. So I really do appreciate it. I pour everything back into the channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you that have felt called to do that. And I love you all so, so much. I will see you again in a future reading. Bye. Hello there, pile number four. If you chose this pile, this is going to be your career reading. Whether you are in a career that you are really currently loving and you want to advance into the next level, or you are looking for what your career path might be, I hope that this reading will give you some insight. I believe that it will. And if you are new to my pick of cards, the first thing we always like to do is set an intention candle together. So if you chose pile number four, this is a pink candle, and pink candles represent to me the energy of Venus. So this could be Taurus and Libra because Venus to me really is corresponded by the color pink. And also... Um, to me, this is a lot about self-love. Uh, it can be romantic love sometimes, but pink candles, like whenever I feel like I need a little pick-me-up, I usually light a pink candle for myself. Uh, so I correspond them more to self-love. So that might be something you want to set intention for. It could also be for romantic love, but um, you can set an intention for whatever you would like to bring into your life, whether it be a material item, something physical or something, a feeling, a person, a vacation, whatever it might be. And as I set this up, you go ahead and just think about that. And then what I like to do next is actually take a deep breath on the intention that I've set. So I like to put my hands over my heart because when you connect your heart center to your intentions, that's actually the strongest frequency that it can attach to, to be sent out into the universe to come back to you. So I always put my hands on my, over my heart. I'm curious how many of you actually do that. So if you do put your hands over your heart, can you tell me down below? Um, I always say that, but nobody's ever said like, I do it too. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put my hands over my heart and I'm gonna take a deep breath in through my nose and out through my mouth. So ready, let's go. All right, go ahead and light this up for us. And I apologize if you can hear the noise. Um, I live on a relatively busy street, something I am manifesting away from because I've lived on this busy street for a long, long time and only recently has it started to bother me. So, um, but I apologize if you can hear cars. So I do feel like that flame actually got pretty strong pretty quick. Uh, so I do feel like your intention will be coming in relatively quickly. And I do feel many of you that chose this pile, maybe you've already been working on your self love and your like relationship with yourself. So good for you. Proud of you. Mama Chloe is proud of you. Um, and I feel like this is a strong indication that it will come in in like a good amount of time. I don't feel like it's going to be like months and months. Um, this is a pretty average size flame. It's not huge. It's not tiny. So it could be within the next couple of weeks, um, maybe even this next week. But let's go ahead and scoot this up over here. And we're going to go ahead and see what the cards have to say for you. So for your career, we have the chariot. We have the Eight of Wands, we have the Hierophant, and we have the Five of Pentacles. So right away, when I saw the chariot, the first word that I heard was inventor. <laughs> and I don't know if that resonates with you specifically, but you are somebody that might be an inventor of something like you're going to create a new product, a new idea, a new way of being something that is brand new. And it's going to open the door for multiple opportunities for you because we have the eight of wands with the Hierophant and the five of pentacles. So with the eight of wands, the eight of wands resembles opportunity and opportunity this could literally be anything like multiple business deals. This could be multiple streams of income from your career. Um, it's just, it's also very fast. Like whatever you rise to the top in, you're going to rise to the top very quickly. And people are going to look to you like a leader because we have the Hierophant here. And the Hierophant is somebody that really sets the tone for others to follow, for others to follow a certain tradition or modality or something of that nature. I look at the Hierophant as being 
being a leader. So um, the Hierophant is also number five in the tarot, and we have the Five of Pentacles. So what that tells me, normally the Five of Pentacles is a lot about poverty, and that might be where you feel like you are right now. But in this reading for your career, I have some great news for you. Um, if you're wanting to move away from that poverty state, um, with, because it's paired with the Hierophant here, I actually feel like you are going to be somebody that provides sanctuary for others. Uh, and I say that because the five of pentacles, it is a lot about like being left out in the cold, but I feel like because maybe you have not had it easy in your life, you don't want other people to struggle the way that you've struggled. And you want to provide some level of uh, sanctuary for people that have been through like traumas or things that you've been through. So I think that's a very beautiful energy, actually. Normally, the Hierophant, like, I feel like there's always one card in the tarot. If any of you are my readers out there, there's always one card in the tarot that when it comes out, I'm like, oh, F this reading. I'm so done. I don't want to, I don't want to see that. And for me, it's the Hierophant. Whenever that comes out, I'm like, get out of here. I don't want you in my reading. Go away. And what's funny though, is in this dynamic with how it's laid out, it's actually in a really great position. And I feel like it's actually very complimentary. So I love that. I feel like that's the first time in all my years of reading tarot that I've ever seen those come out together and like give me that kind of vibe because different decks read differently too. But I feel like it's actually a really like a positive thing. And I wonder if any of y'all are Capricorns. Y'all my Capricorns, are any of you Capricorn peeps? Because I feel like I'm getting a big Capricorn vibe. Um, but I do feel like because of the things that you have survived, you are going to help others do that. And you're maybe going to make something or invent something or be a part of something that is going to be part of facilitating that. Um, you could be the actual leader, the head honcho on it, or you could be somebody that's just a part of the process. But I do feel like whatever you do in your career field, like I said, you're going to rise to the top very quickly. Um, or not or and you're going to be somebody that like people look to you because you're innovative and something else I want to remind all of you that chose pile number four is the chariots the chariot tells me that you don't need anything else if you have been struggling to get started on something you have every single tool at your disposal you just need to start and I feel like many of you have been sitting on really great ideas because you don't know what to do and you're waiting for somebody else, be it a friend or maybe somebody else in the industry that you're thinking about, you're waiting for them to kind of hold your hand. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need them to hold your hand. You don't need them to hold your hand. You don't need them to guide you through it. It's great that you have that person and it's great that they're there to guide you because I do think they're going to be very helpful for you. And like, they're great to have them in your back pocket <laughs> and like, listen to the advice that they have for you. But in terms of the chariot, you literally have everything. I'm hearing specifically if you like want to start an Instagram page and you need graphic work, like don't be afraid to hire that out, but also know that like, even in terms of like deciding on a layout or deciding on a name or deciding on a color palette, like you just need to sit down and do it. You don't need anybody else to point that out for you. You know, like I said, don't be afraid to accept help or hire help, but know that you have everything you need right now. You have all the knowledge, tools, and skills that you need to start doing things today. Like this is a very fast paced energy and spirit is saying today, like do something today. Um, also the candle flame is huge at this point. I don't even know. Is that like cutting off the screen? This is a, this is the biggest flame I think we've seen today. So spirit is really resonating with what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So we have for you judge balancing justice and compassion, managing the fair distribution of power. So you're somebody that I do believe whatever this is, you'll be a leader of sorts that helps to redistribute power. And I think, I think for some of you, this is big, like, don't get me wrong. Career is always a big life choice, but 
I feel like this is really big for those of you that chose this pile because you're actually going to help redistribute power in the world. Like this for some of you is going to be very global and very like you're helping undo a system that has not helped humanity. And that's going to be a common theme that we're going to see amping up over the next while as we move in through the age into not through. I don't think in this lifetime, unless we learn how to become immortal, we will never see outside of the age of Aquarius, not in these bodies anyways. So you're going to be somebody that is a huge part of the shift with the age of Aquarius that is going to help redistribute power. And many people that have been born at this time are here for that purpose. And you are definitely somebody that feels called to do that, to dismantle what has been here so that it can be changed. Ooh, I have goosebumps. Um, Oh my gosh, this is so be I'm going to cry. Oh my God. Sorry. Whew, I'm okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. My cat just sat straight up. Cats, get y'all a cat. If you ever feel like something is going on, um, cats, I swear to you, they like travel to different astral planes, even when they sleep and they will know when something is up. Like, I think my cat felt the energy shift because it's like, what the heck? <laughs> the energy in this room just shifted. I'm okay. Um, okay. So we have the alchemist transform transformation of base motives and goals into golden wisdom. The reason I want you to know why this is so important is we're moving into a golden age. I just talked about this in another reading today and I apologize. I don't remember which one it was. One of the piles today also spoke about the golden age and moving into the golden age. I honestly probably need to make a video on this talking more about it, but we're moving into a golden age. That's like all about being beautifully creative, everybody being more authentically aligned with their path. And you are somebody that has already learned that, or you will be learning that you're like ahead of the curve. You're a leader in this. You are a light leader. You are someone that based on what you do in your career, you are going to influence the people around you to move in the same way and influence them for the better, not for like a wicked disguised, like gross thing. Like you're going to influence people for the better to become the best versions of themselves that they can be so that they can do the same. And the alchemist is really about making complete, clear, beautiful alchemy of their life. Um, I believe everybody has the potential to be an alchemist if you feel called to that, but you are somebody that literally you can transform motives, goals into this like golden, beautiful channeled wisdom to share with others. You're extremely wise, pile number four. If you chose this pile, like I'm hearing that you have a very strong, um, you have a strong suit for communication. You're somebody that your voice, or maybe it's by the written word or some kind of form of communication that you have is valuable and needs to be used in this lifetime. It's part of your purpose. It's like this reading pile number four, this goes beyond career. We're talking about like your life purpose at this point. Um, and I have like so many messages that are like flooding in right now, but you, you have such a gift and you were given the gift of communication so that you could spread that. So we also have shapeshifter light attributes, skill to skill at navigating through difficult levels of consciousness, ability to see the potential in everything. So oh, I literally just got the chills again. So I've gotten the chills so many times today. I feel like this reading is a lot of people are going to see this and not necessarily this pile, but I feel like a lot of people are going to see this reading. Like I have gotten the chills, I think in almost every reading today, which is not normal. That does not always happen. Um, but with shapeshifter, it's like, ah, oh, man, shapeshifter people, like anybody that identifies with that, with being able to move fluidly through, like to have the hard conversations with yourself, to get in there and do the work and not be afraid of it. Y'all are my people. Like <sighs> life is crazy and difficult. And we have a lot of weird self-imposed, like self-imposed and rules that have kind of been put on us by others or parents, guardians, teachers, what have you. 
And to me, a true shapeshifter has the ability to transcend those things and have the honest conversations with themselves and actually see the shadow aspect of self for what it is and not be afraid of it, not be turned off by it to fully embrace and accept themselves and what their highest calling and purpose is. And it's like, I feel for some reason I'm hearing like, you might be someone that you really have wanted like a tribe of people around you that really do this same thing. And it's hard for you to find these people because so many people are stuck in the matrix and so many people are living life at the 3d level when consciously we have risen beyond that consciously some people are up in the 5d some people are in the 4d and it's not about being better or worse than another person it's your consciousness has just risen because you've actually done the work to undo past programming that's really what i want to get to and so I feel like many of you have done that or are doing that or you're going to be embarking on that journey because it's a huge part of what is going to help you in your career. Your career is really linked to your life purpose. There are people that that is not the case. I don't think any other reading that we've done today has resonated with that. Like your career is part of your life purpose and why you came here. So with Shapeshifter though, this is a beautiful energy. You literally can do anything when you recognize that you're a shapeshifter and you can transcend literally any kind of weird rule that we've been given as humanity. And I say weird because literally there's an infinite amount of possibility. And so many people live in like a tiny corner of a box of that infinite reality when we have the ability to transcend and experience all of it. So I also feel that many of you are going to be bridge people, which like this isn't even this is like a, my own term. I didn't get this anywhere. Bridge people are people to me that they are the bridge between the 3D and the 5D. And they're here to help. Like there's another word for this, too. They're like light workers. They're way showers. Like there are other words for this, but I don't know. I guess I just like the term bridge people. OK, <laughs> but it's like you're kind of the bridge that helps people cross over, that helps people to come to understand their infinite potential and possibility. And like, it might not even be about building a business around that. You might work for an establishment that does that or, be, but like your, whatever you do career wise, this is going to be a part of it, if that makes sense. So this is beautiful. Your reading is so powerful. Okay, so next we have sixth house routine and the south node, life's debt. So I really feel like the reason you're able to do this and become this person, you have already either repaid so much karmic debt in this life or this lifetime is the gift because in a past life or multiple past lives, you've transcended. I got goosebumps again. Um, you have transcended the debt. You have transcended. You have done so much work already that you have transcended the debt that you owed. And in this lifetime, yes, I do believe that whenever we decide to incarnate, it does have a lot to do with life's debt and debt that we create or debt that we've come in with. Um, but I feel like you've worked through so, so much of this, that this is why you have this ability to do this. And with the sixth house routine, I feel like you're somebody who questions routine. And that's going to be honestly like you're saving grace because don't get me wrong. Routines are a good thing to have. We establish routines of meditation. We establish routines of waking up in the morning with the sun or going to bed at a certain time or, you know, routines are not a bad thing. Routines are great. Personal hygiene is great. But I also feel like you're someone that questions why certain routines exist because you are here to break that mold of what is the traditional and what is the standard. And honestly, with that Hierophant talking about tradition, 
I feel like you're here to break those traditions. You're like a rebel. You are somebody that is here. Like, look at this girl on the motorcycle with her knife out. I feel like that's you. You're like, hey, did you come to fight? Because I came to fight for justice, okay? <laughs> so I feel like you really are here to question those routines and to make people think, to spin reality on its head in such a way that people are forced to recognize their shadow selves. They are forced, they can't like, you are such a mirror. You're probably highly empathic or a light worker. You are a mirror that forces people to look at the parts of themselves that they don't want to. So we also have root chakra. The frequency of the root chakra, the red flower of life, stimulates passion and supports our sense of security on the physical plane, both in our bodies as well as in the physical world. So you are never going to have to worry about this. If you follow your purpose, your passion, you help others in that way. Spirit is saying to me that you will never have to worry about survival. You will never have to worry about your basic survival needs through your career and through your path and through this. You, that will always be provided for. Just go out there and use your gifts. That's why you're here. Like, it's almost like, I almost feel like you're not going to have a typical career. Like, it's not, that's why this has been so hard to like, pin down like this has been a really interesting reading that it started out kind of career but it's almost to me like you're not gonna have a like the traditional career but spirit wants you to know that you're never gonna be starving you're never going to be houseless you're never going to have to worry about those basic human needs they will be provided you're just here to expand and use your gifts to help others and we also have dynamic the frequency of dynamic supports our ability to harmonize between layers and aspects of different origin and frequency. It helps us to put together a reality that is made up of many different elements, both familiar and completely new with ease, grace, and great joy. This is literally what I'm talking about to harmonize different layers. When we talk about the 3d, the 4d, the 5d, they're just different layers of consciousness. So it's, you have the ability to harmonize in such a way that you can kind of shift between wherever you need to be to be of service. Wow, this reading, like, I feel like pile number one was kind of like this too. Like, I feel like I need to go for a jog. Like, I'm so energized by what I just read. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful. Maybe some of you are like, what in the what? Like, I've never heard like 8,000 of the words this crazy lady just said. But if, if any of this is like unfamiliar or please leave me a comment down below because I I want like with my podcast that I run every, every Tuesday, technically it goes live on the podcast, but then some of them are videos here as well. Um, with my podcast, I want to dive into these things. I want to teach you about alchemy. I want to teach you about the 3d, the 4d and the 5d. I want to teach you about the age of Aquarius. I want to teach you about astrology and like I want to do those things so you can have that information too so please let me know if there's any of this stuff that you would like highlighted more I have such a long list for podcasts but I really feel like group number four those of you that chose this pile like some of you might be feeling confused not all of you some of you I feel like this resonated a thousand percent and I feel your energy like you might even feel amped up right now too um but some of you that are confused, please leave me a comment down below asking maybe more about these things and the intricacies of them, because I would love to do more on that stuff to help you understand. Um, and that is everything. So please do not forget to claim your blessing. If you want any of these cards for yourself, all of the cards will be linked down below in the order that they appear. And uh, please do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I am at Chloe Taylor. And last but certainly not least, if this reading resonated and you feel called to do so, it's never an expectation, but always appreciated. Excuse me. I do have my Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal listed down below. I do accept tips for readings. Uh, many of the decks that I purchase for readings are because of that, because of what you generously give to me. Um, I pour all of it back into this channel, so I really do appreciate it. Uh, again, it's never an expectation from you, but if you feel called to and you're able, I really appreciate it. And that is all I have for you. I love you so much. Pile number four. Please, please, please go forth and share your gift 
gifts. Don't be scared. I know that's easier said than done, but I promise you, you have something so powerful inside of you that is just dying to burst forth. So I love you all so much and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.